All right, let's get right into it. You already know what this is. This is the P.S. I Love Me show brought to you by Omega Enterprises and your favorite radio station, LMC, where loyalty is everything. Let's get right to the meat and potatoes of this. First and foremost, thank you for everybody that's joining in right now. Um, it's always a pleasure to work with everyone that participates and shows love and wants to show some promise on growth. I want to give a special shout out to DJ Lou, who always helps everybody in this platform and does everything. He just saved me. We were troubleshooting something. We are live on YouTube, Twitch, and Mixcloud. So we have three different streaming agents that are going on right now for everyone that's paying attention. This is the PS I Love Me show for those that are tuning in for the first time. It is a show to give you a different perspective on growth, uh, to help you love yourself First, before you love something else, we should be living in an interdependent world or an independent world, not a dependent world. We depend on other people to be happy, where we depend on other people to carry out our responsibilities. That way there's no expectations, there's no assumptions of anxiety that comes with false expectations and putting things in situations that they don't belong. The first topic that I'm going to talk about today, we're going to get into it. And I'm here joined by one of my really good friends, Super Dave, the producer. He's always here uh, helping me out. He's been, he's, he's been out. Everybody's missing him for a long time, but he's here with us today. And it's a, it's a great thing. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is the eagle, the actual bird, the animal, the eagle. Um, you know, you ask people about the eagle, the first thing they tell you is that that's... That's, I think that represents the United States, the bald eagle, I think, right? Is that the, the United States bird is the eagle, right? Yes, what else What else do we know about the eagle? Tell me a couple of things that, that comes to mind when you talk about eagle, Dave. Let them know. Um, wingspan. Wingspan. has very large wingspan, you know. Um, uh, they, they are endangered species, some of them, yes. right? They, they are very well protected. If you touch a uh, eagle's nest, you are in big trouble. You're going to pay heavy fines and up to a certain amount of time in jail. If I'm not mistaken. Could be. Yeah, so with the surcharges nowadays, you don't want to get involved with anything like that. So if you ever see eagles, you know, uh, nesting or just leave them alone, call someone, they'll tell you the same thing. You can't touch them. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're just sacred. So let's talk about the eagle a little bit. The eagle is the type of bird that can hang out by himself or the eagle can hang out with a bunch of other birds and other animals as well. So picture this. Because nowadays, a lot of animals are, more, are congregating more than ever because of corona. You know, you'll see more animals in the streets and in the cities more than ever. Even in Central Park, they had an alarming rate of deer that they had to get out of uh, Central Park. They had to roll them into uh, trucks and they had to actually remove them and take them back up, up north. Yeah. They migrated over because smell of the food. There was less people in the streets. There was less people, you know, everywhere. So... Yeah, because now you see possums and you see raccoons in, 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 in the ghetto, like if like, like there were squirrels. So the eagle can hang out with any animal. A lot of animals are jealous of the eagle because the eagle is a very proud bird. You know, it has its chest, you know. Um, but what you need to understand about the eagle is they get bored when they're around a lot of nonsense. If, if the birds are playing games and they're not doing anything serious... Uh, the eagle gets very bored and will fly away, right? So the eagle will fly away, and there's always a bird that follows the eagle for some reason. It'll follow the eagle, um, and it'll start picking at the eagle's feathers. So the eagle's flying away, trying to get away from the situation, and then you got this little bird coming behind the eagle, picking, picking, picking at the eagle's feathers. And the eagle looks back and says, Young man, you know what I'm saying? Little guy, you, you, no need to do that. You know, he gives him a warning. It's okay. And then the eagle will fly away and the little one's not, no, I'm stubborn. I'm pesty. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I want the eagle's attention. I can be an eagle. I can be an eagle. So the eagle, again, will turn around and look at the bird and say, come on. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know if you've seen an eagle's talons. It, it, like, it can grab animals. And it can grab babies. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like you could grab a, a baby or a chihuahua or a small dog and fly away with this thing like and then the beak ain't nothing to play with either the beak is very strong 
very very robust nose. Um, the eagle's eyes are without a doubt one of the best eyes in the animal kingdom. So let's get back to the story. So then the eagle, you know, tries to warn the little one. The little one doesn't want to listen. So then what does the eagle do? Here's, here, pay attention to this. The eagle flies higher. So whenever somebody's pesting you, whenever somebody's bothering you, when somebody's trying to bite your feathers, like what Julie said the last time that somebody was testing her intelligence, I'm like, they can't unless you allow them. This is part of continuation. Continuing what we spoke about before where people cannot test your intelligence unless you let them. They're testing your emotions because that's the only thing that can remove facts. That's the only thing that can remove structure, foundation, intelligence, knowledge. Someone will actually convince you that the knowledge that you have is unreal because you allowed your emotional intelligence to be rubbed the wrong way. Get out of your feelings. Let's practice not allowing feelings to come from something else except from the things that you do for yourself. You understand? Let these feelings come from you because if they come from you, you know where they're coming from and you know where they're going. Anyway, the eagle takes a different approach. The eagle flies higher and the bird, as stubborn as the bird is, will continue to follow the bird, the, the eagle. But here's the problem. The eagle will keep flying higher and won't have to turn around and snap at this bird. Because the eagle, like I said, is a proud bird. But the eagle is the only bird that can fly above the atmosphere. <laughs> it's the only bird that can fly above the atmosphere. Let's go back and let's do what we always do. Let's put this to full circle. So if the eagle is the bird that flies the highest, or the animal that flies the highest, and it has one of the best eyesight, then you're talking about a bird that can fly and float in the air. And whenever there's prey, the prey doesn't even see it because the bird is all the way up there. So the bird, the eagle will fly high where the oxygen level is not there for the other bird. Guess what happens to the other bird? They literally drop dead out of the sky because their structure, their lung capacity is not the same as the eagle. So the eagle doesn't even have to touch this bird. What I'm trying to tell you, what is the analogy here? Whenever a chihuahua is barking, whenever a, a, a pest is bothering you, whenever somebody is pushing your buttons, whenever somebody is getting on your last nerve, fly high like the eagle. They cannot take the air up there. Be prestigious. Have some class. Show some resiliency, right? Show some discipline. All those fancy words that mean the same thing. Show something. Fly like an eagle. Now, wait a minute. I'm going to tell you something wild. I'm a motivator. I'm a life coach. I'm a positive entity, right? But I've converted from a world that was contradictory to that, and it was opposite. And I myself will tell you, as, a, as motivated as I can be and as positive as I can be, unfortunately, I'm going to kick something to you. There are some people that need to be slapped in the face. There are some people that need to get slapped in the face. There are some people that will not stop and will disrespect you and challenge you and put their hands on you and make you feel so uncomfortable that the only thing that is left that's logical, which is not logical, is to smack them. I made a joke yesterday. I made a joke yesterday when I went to the gym. I came out the gym and I said, man, I'm so happy that I just want to run outside and smack somebody in the face and just tell them, hey, you know, and I'm just showing love, you know what I'm saying? And, and everybody, some people will look at that like, what the heck? But people that know me would say that, you know, they understand that. They understand that. Not that I'm going to go out and start slapping people in the face. I'm not condoning violence at all. Especially instigated violence where you're the one who's initiating the violence. You understand? I'm talking about defending yourself. I'm talking about standing up for yourself. Don't be like me that I dropped the ball on several occasions to stand up. For my other half of certain situations, which I didn't, because I thought I was bringing down the tone of certain situations, but you, first and foremost, you have to step up to the plate and become a protector before anything else. So protect yourself. Fly high like the eagle. The eagle could have turned around at any point in the air and snapped at that little bird and broke it in half. 
Trust me, you don't play with these birds. These birds are huge. You know what I'm saying? It's like you just said, a, wi a wingspan like a human with hands like a human, nails that are sharp, a, 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 a beak that can snap things, snap bone. Are you serious? No. So, in other words, some people are going to challenge you for many reasons. There is such thing as positive challenges. You, you, know, you have a, a positive debate. A good, healthy debate is always necessary because you want to be able to accept different perspectives. You want to be able to see things from a different light. Something that you may have overlooked or never come across, which will be an enlightening situation if you allow it to happen. We talked about awareness in this show. We talked about being aware, be at your best conscious, that if you're not eating right, it is blocking and interfering with the moving parts of your brain, right? And how it works. You have to be healthy mentally, physically, spiritually. How do you do this? Hey, listen to some good music. Don't listen to music that's going to bring you down. Exercise a little bit. Go take a walk. Everybody's different, but there's no denying that if you're allowing the food to stay in your body for too long and you're not shaking it up like a soda, right? It's not going anywhere. It's saturating. It's staying inside, right? It's becoming part of your body, your bones, your, your insides. We don't want to do that. We'll see you today. Hey, Mickey, how you doing? Barbie's here, of course. And, uh, yeah, we have, yeah, Johnny Gunn stuck around for a little bit. How you doing? And anybody else out there in the YouTube world, anybody out there in the Twitch world, how you doing? Again, Omega Enterprises, this is LMC Radio. The name of the show is P.S. I Love Me. I wrote it that way sometimes to cause a little bit of controversy so people could say, hey, who does he think he is? You know, like, who do, oh, he's full of himself. I'm like, yes, I am full of myself because I'm the only one that injects myself with all this positive energy. We all full of ourselves, but what are you full of? <laughs> I don't want to say the word. We're not going there. How much time we got left? We got plenty of time to talk about some of these subjects. Like I said, I'm in a great mood. Part of the reason is because I got my main man over here, Dave, with me. And this guy's always been a pleasure to be around. Very intelligent guy. I don't hang out with people that are not intelligent because then I would be playing myself unless they want to grow. Right? So that's where we at. Let's talk about another subject. Let me see. Let's, let's, let's talk about another subject. Let's talk about who you are in bed with. Dun, 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 dun. Now, we're not just talking about your mate and the sexual partner that you have. We're talking about who you work with, who you break bread with, basically. You understand? Like, who you sit down at the dinner table. You know, just because I have a six or a eight-person dining table doesn't mean, that I, doesn't mean that I need to have those seats filled all the time. You know what I'm saying? I have a tables. I have tables just in case that can facilitate a large group. But... I prefer for those tables not to be filled to capacity because that's chaotic, you understand? So why would you do it in any other way? Who you sleep with, who you talk to, who do you risk your relationship with? Who are the people that you speak outside, right, of the relationships that you carry, whether they be, you could live with your mom, you could live with your mate, you could live with your kids. Who are you cheating out of having a pleasant relationship? Who are you in bed with? Do you talk to people that don't get along with other people you get along with? Because they, what, what's the saying goes? You, you are the enemy. You are the friend of my enemy. So the, therefore, the friend of my the, the friend of my enemy is my friend. The friend of my enemy is my friend, or the enemy of my friend is my enemy. Something like that to that extent. Who knows? If anybody else wants to write in and type this, you know, let me know. But nevertheless, it doesn't matter because we're not here to focus solely on how it's said, the most important thing is to interpret it in the right way. So if anybody can please write how that thing is written, we'll look it up too. Um, I'll look it up here. I was supposed to, Lou, I was supposed to show the scene on, on what else is out here, but it's not coming out. Let me see, oh, let me see. I'm just doing a little quick run here, see what happens. Nah, I'm supposed to share my screen, but we'll do that next time. Um, so think about this. If, you, if you're with someone, all right, look, first of all, in a relationship, you're not supposed to bash people when you're not around them. 
right? I, I, am I right or wrong about that, Dave? Like, like when you're in a relationship, you you don't go behind their back and start attacking them, because that shows a sign of weakness in the relationship. It also means that you're encouraging other people to come and do the same thing, and they don't. That, and the people around you do not have the confidence about your relationship. Let me say that again. Let me say that again. If you don't think it's important for the people around you to be critical of what kind of relationship you have, like how much weight does it carry? Can we see that? How much weight does it carry? The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Hey, I, I, I don't doubt him. We just check the facts because if we're not unsure, we double check the facts here. Thank you for sharing the stream. I appreciate that. So you got to understand that you have to protect the things that are the most important to you. And if relationships are not important to you, then guess what? You're going to lose. You're going to lose. You're going to lose relationships. You're going to lose time. You're going to lose energy. You're going to lose faith. But don't say, oh, I don't care what other people think. That is not true. Everybody cares about what other people think. Maybe not to everyone. There are people that you value their interpretation or, or their criticism towards you more than anybody else. And then there's other people that the moment they start talking about you, you can't handle it because of the previous relationship or communication that you have with this person. What I'm saying is this. I'm going to tell you this. If, if I know a couple that fights and argues all the time and it's always chaos, that's not a steady couple. That's not a couple that I want to go out with. That's not a couple that I would like to spend time with. At the same time, you have to be aware that if you're in a situation with a couple that's not getting along and there's attitudes, people feel that vibe, especially people that want to relax and get to a certain age where success is happiness, and happiness is tranquility, peace. That's my opinion. Some other people find success in money. Some people find success in property, in value, equity. You know, some people spend all their money and live check to check. They own a lot of stuff, but but for 20 years they live check to check because they don't want to lose their property. What kind of life is that? You know, I mean, you could have bought something a little less expensive and you could have a little bit more entertaining if that's your thing. Be careful who you talk to. Be careful who you hang out with. Be careful who you DM in social media. Be careful who's throwing hearts, X's and O's. You know, people are watching. People do not want you to be happy. People do not want you to be higher than them on an emotional status. You understand what I'm saying? Nobody wants to do that. So, yes, who you talk to, who you in bed with, you know, a relationship is, salute DJ Mix, a relationship is an investment. Let's get this right. Everything that you do is an investment. My next meme that I'm going to write, my next post, um, it's, it's going to talk about you know, you get out of what you put into it and then some if you focus. <coughs> Excuse me. Relationships is an investment. The time that you spend on yourself is an investment. You got to understand if, listen, you know how you let things go in life? I'm going to tell you one way to let things go. If you start telling yourself that the future is going to be better than the past, then your future will start becoming better right away because you are already putting a positive connotation in what lies ahead. So it's kind of a positive anxiety, right? It's kind of a positive assumption, so to speak. It's kind of a positive expectation. Forecast. See how that works? Forecast. So can we really separate expectations and assumptions into negative and positive? Yes. A positive assumption is an assumption that you make because you're looking for something good. The agenda is to get right to the heart of the matter or to something positive. Now, a negative agenda or a negative assumption is when you're talking out of your ass and you're not talking facts. Oh, I cursed. Be careful. That's not a curse. They use it in modern language and it's not even an after eight word anyway. They, they use it all day, right? All right, so we're good. I just got cleared by, by Super Dave. He's down with the FCC. You know how we do it. Um, but anyway, at any rate, protect everything that you put time into it so that it creates some type of sustainability. You know what I'm saying? Not every investment has to be physical, tangible. There are investments where you have emotional ties. You know what I'm saying? You put a lot of time and effort into something. Nobody wants to break up with their boyfriend or girlfriend. You know why? Because they put so much time into it. 
they would feel like a failure at this point because they did so much time, they feel that it's going to fix itself. It's not. It's not. Nothing fixes itself. This is not Marvel or DC. You know what I'm saying? Nobody's Wolverine. For all you Marvel X-Men heads out there, yes. Listen, let's not get too excited about this situation, okay? Protect the things that you, you, you put time and effort into just like you put money into. It's not always about money. Because money comes and goes, okay? The things that really matter are the things that make you feel a certain way. Am I right or wrong? I don't know. I'm asking you guys, you know, how we do this. What's the next subject? How much? Oh, we got a half an hour. I talk really fast and then I slow down. I'm not judging anybody, but you already know. Um, let's talk about a little thing that I learned in one of my business classes, which is called predatory pricing. As you know, for those that have been following the show, I compare business, a business life, to the human life. Because that's the type of life we, we, we're in, especially in the United States. We live in capitalism, right? Capitalism is what, supposedly, because it's, it's a little different than that. We're not going to go deep into that for all you economists <laughs> and financial advisors. We're not going to do that. Um, but we're all, we, I am going to tell you that Predatory pricing is when you entice someone with a low price at first to bring in right consumers. And then you create habits, which is not demographic, de demographics anymore. I told you, it's psychographics. It's the way people behave. Because demographics is what type of people live where. Uh, and psychographics are what makes people move, what makes people purchase, you know what I'm saying, which is a little bit deeper. Now they're getting into your head. That's why these commercials, sex sells, chaos sells. That's why you see so much of it because everybody's interested in it, you know, and people into pimple popping, you know what I'm saying? So they use that as a, as a, as a format. You know, everybody has their own little, I don't want to say sicknesses, their, their, their voids, their entries, right? Their, their personal interests. Um, what's guilty? Pleasures, right? Yeah. yeah, whatever. I don't know. But predatory pricing to entice and, and give a discount in the beginning to then raise the price later. But Amiga, what are you talking about? How do you relate that to the human life? Well, guess what? That's a hidden agenda. So you've really never, you've never yourself or someone done this to you where you offer something at a discount rate, like some type of favor. <laughs> In order to hit you harder later, or to be in depth to this person, or for this person to use this against you? You ever buy something on sale? Exactly. You get what you pay for. The best thing to do in life is to get as much as you can out of the situation that's on hand, right? But when somebody has a hidden agenda, and they're here to help someone, and the only reason why they're helping someone is because of what they're going to get out of it later, that's predatory pricing because you're doing something for something you're going to get better. It's not an equal... You understand what I'm trying to tell you? It's not an, an equivalent offering. It, it is something that... Hey, I'm going to do... I'm, I'm going to... All right, look, check this out. I'll pick up the Chinese food for you. Hey, bro, on the way home, pick up the Chinese food. Okay, cool. Now, tomorrow, can you drive me to um, Delaware? <laughs> That's not equivalent. Especially if you live in New York City. The The... the what you want out of it is, you know, I'll do anything you want because whatever, what you give me is so important that I'm willing to do all these little things because they don't match predatory pricing. People are being a predator towards your kindness, right? To, towards your energy. They're offering you something that you need, but the imbalance is that what they need, they're going to hit you hard. You can't say no because they just did all these little favors. But then you would tell them, hey, you know, you did me these favors and I appreciate it. Is there another way I can help you? Because I don't see me being able to take you all the way down. You know, think think about what I'm saying. Think about what I'm trying to tell you. Okay, business is very much like life because life lives through business. You go to you go to work for thirty years, thirty five years, forty years. If you're lucky, you have another five or ten years to live, so you can enjoy forty years of working. I don't see the mathematics there. I don't see the math. If it works for certain people, that's fine. Picket fence, house. Mortgage, you'll be paying mortgage until the, the, the river runs dry. You know what I'm saying? Until white bird becomes pink. Or when pigs fly, right? Remember that? But um, look, for you guys that are not investing in...
stocks right now, if you're not investing in cryptocurrency, you're doing yourself a disservice. If you're not investing in insurance, which is a whole life insurance or an index, and you're not invite, uh, investing in municipal bonds, which are very safe with a very low yield, you're doing yourself a disservice. Put some insurance on yourself. That way, if some, when you, something happens to you, your kids have a foundation, especially those that keep making an excuse and start saying, hey, I'll wait until I get be a manager. I'll wait until I get a raise so I can start saving. No, start putting money in an investment so you can borrow against it without paying any taxes. And you become your own bank by calling your own interest rate. I know that's a lot, but listen to me. I do a lot of research and I'm doing everything I can to prepare for me and for all those around me that care about me. They will all be a part of this situation so yes, you gave me a nickel when you want a dollar back. Exactly, exactly. Those are the people that 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 you say. Those are the people that you give them something and and they're not satisfied. That they they you give them an inch and they take the whole yard, uh, the whole yeah. foot, right? Yeah. yeah, like so. That's very old, old saying, right? Like, and then and then I had a problem with another one, which is you can't have your cake and eat it too. And I didn't know, I didn't understand what that meant. So I had to do research. You know what I'm saying on what that meant? Is that you can't eat your you can't eat your cake twice? <laughs> I'm like, wow. And I also looked up, it is what it is, because that was another problem that we had. So I looked up a lot of these references to see how on point they are. And I will have you know that the old references do not always apply to the era now. You understand what I'm saying? The current era right now does not always apply to these old references. So if you grew up in a Spanish, oh, you know what, a Spanish or a black family you would have been raised with a lot of these um, nuggets of information. Like, you know, the, the, you can take a horse to water, you can't make them drink, you can't top the, the sky with your hand, right? There's, these are going on for days, especially those that grew up in a Baptist church. Lord have mercy, you already know where that's coming. So I went to Baptist church. It's a whole lot of fun. And if, you're not, if you don't have any energy, you go back to the Catholic church and, and sing psalms all you want. But um, yes, and I'm not disrespecting any religion whatsoever i am not religious but i do believe in god uh do not follow any religion but i know that the energy and the things that i've been through that you can't explain it's not left for science to give you the answers for those things you know what i'm saying so let's get that out the way that is my opinion and that's the way things work 6 37 on time there was a controversy with dave Chappelle with the I, what are the initials because i never get them right B A B C D E L B G T Q. That I don't. I, I swear I do not know the community and the letters. Don't be offended. Should, am I supposed to know these things? Maybe. Maybe I'll be a little bit more responsible that if I'm going to talk about something that I should be able to identify the letters that are consistent with the community that they're talking about. But there's a big thing that happened with Big Dave Chappelle, and it's supposed to be the last live that he was doing for Netflix, and they were going to remove it, and there was a lot of offense, a lot of jokes being in that direction. I only heard a couple of the jokes. I did not see it, so I can't offend it, but that is current information that's going on right now. LGBTQ. There you go. Thank you for that information. I appreciate you. L-G-B-T-Q. Those are five initials. So yeah, this is not the show that we bash anybody here. We don't, we're not here about preferences. We're not here about what you prefer to do. This is a show about humanity. You know what I'm saying? This is a show about humans. We don't judge you based on what you look. We don't judge you based on your beliefs. We judge you on your interests to grow. We, we judge you on your hunger to remove yourself from ignorance. We help you identify what a real asshole is. Whoever is tapping into the show, if you go into my, my, um, my Omega Enterprises on YouTube, you will see a variety of videos and a podcast slash chapter book that gives you uh, instructions or a different perspective on how to view energy, motivation, how to put levels on things so that you can look at things from a mathematical computation for those things that are intangible. This all sounds second nature to me. It's like I'm becoming embedded to this type of life. Like, for instance, this is what I wanted to do. So I did the practice. I put the work in. This man can tell you when I did my first recording in the studio that I was all over the place. I was so sick to my stomach. I had butterflies. I threw up the day before. They were there coaching me, and it was serious. And I expected them to look down on me and say, you know, um, 
he, he, he doesn't know what he's doing, but I think they understood what it takes to be in the booth. And I have a new way of looking at people that do these recordings in the booth, podcasters and interviewers. Like, this is a serious thing. If this is something that you want to do, contact me. We'll, we'll get you set up with a podcast. But understand that there's a lot of work that goes into this, a lot of cardio with the mask on so that I can speak without losing my breath. You see that I talk a lot? Why? Because it's a talk show, right? So it's not ironic. It's just absolute. It's different. It's not ironic. Ironic would be a little bit in the awkward, unorthodox category. You know what I'm saying? So we're not going to do that. Um, so yes, live your life like a business because we live in a government, government, just wanted to say, that's capitalism. <laughs> it's control. Capitalism and government are intertwined. They, they correlate. You know what I'm saying? Like one can't live without the other because... The government uh, caters towards businesses. You know what I'm saying? They cater towards capitalism. So, again, if you're the type that needs to be catered to and you lack a lot of attention, why are you working 40 years to only enjoy five? You should be an entrepreneur. You should be a business. If you're like the type of person that likes attention, well, what better attention to get than to get customers in your business? You want attention from people that have already given you attention? If you need that much attention, that's a personality trait that should trigger you owning a business because you need that much attention, you're not going to get but so much attention for the people that you're around, your family members, your son, your kid, your mother, your daughter, your sister, your girlfriend, your dog, your chicken, your bunny, your goldfish, your parrot. We can go on and on. People now have pet raccoons. But anyway, think about this. Think about this. It doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, and I don't even like that saying, at the end of the day, live your life like a business. And if you are the type that needs a lot of attention, open a business. Because when business is slow, what do you think that type of person is going to do? They're going to go out there and seek some attention. And that's what marketing and promotion is. Duh. You know what I'm saying? Now, how's that? Put that in your pipe and smoke it. If you ever heard that before, I applaud you. But I've never heard that before. You know what I'm saying? Because we, we are a problem-solving union here. The PS and PS I Love Me stands for problem-solving. Now, that's wild, right? PS I Love Me. In other words, in order for you to love yourself, you have to solve problems, but you have to identify what the problems are. How do we solve problems? You first have to identify what the problem is. But you have to be accurate in your description. And you have to also know what role you play in this. What is your contribution towards this? When you're at that point, you're at a high level, like we were talking about before, of the Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which the top version, again, I'm going to say this three weeks in a row, self-actualization. When you realize who you are, what makes you tick, what makes you go, your role, your contribution towards things, then you become the absolute aware of who you are. Think about what I'm saying. In psychology, it's a study of an individual. In sociology, it is the study of groups. So are you mostly with groups or are you mostly by yourself? Because if you're mostly with groups, you need to concentrate a little bit more on the socio sociological aspect of your life because you spend most of your time with people. But if you spend more of your time alone, then you get to identify a little bit more with who you are. But if you're spending time with a lot of other people, you're picking up habits. You're catering to them because sometimes you have to be equivalent, right? To, to think about this. It's a very, very, very tough responsibility. Understanding the responsibility, because a lot of people don't understand what their responsibilities are. Just to switch up a little bit, I'll give you an example. For those fathers or mothers that pat themselves in the back for things that they're supposed to do, like when, a, when, when the argument of a, of a dad that says, but I buy Pampers. That is not a valid argument. You have to buy Pampers. You can't pat yourself in the back or use it as leverage because that comes with the territory. That's just like rent. You have to pay rent whether you're arguing with your girlfriend or not. If not both of you will get kicked out. So there are things that you have to understand that are not, that are out of bounds, right? And, bound, and when you realize that regardless of how mad you are or what happens, that those things are never to be touched, right? Or, or, or worked on because those are absolute things. That's when you start becoming an adult. That's when you start realizing what it is to mature, you know? And you have to be aware of these things. You have to honest, be honest with yourself and look in the mirror and be like, yo, you ain't shit, yo. You know what I'm saying? 
You have to look in the mirror and say, hey, you ain't shit, bro. Why did you do that? I had a problem with littering. I came from the hood. Littering is natural. You throw things all over the place, bottles, whatever. Ah, pfft, it doesn't matter. Now if I throw something away, it's something that's, that's, that you can eat, it can eat or it perishes, right? But at the same time, be responsible to the animals, supposedly, because if you throw things in the street, then they have, they're going to come to the street and get hit by a car. So it's, it's this wild. Think about this. A person that went from littering to being conscious of not littering, but it's okay to litter if something's perishable, but if you are going to throw it out, put it in a safe place so an animal doesn't get killed. That's a lot of shit to think about, man. <laughs> Let's go. Um, but yes, if you want to take it that far and you want to be the absolute responsible, understand that there's levels to this. And in the end game, you don't want to hurt anybody. You don't even realize or recognize the damage that you're doing to people because you're too busy thinking about yourself. So when I say love yourself first, it's okay to be selfish in the sense where you're giving something up for something that you're not getting nothing out of it. You understand? So that's a different story. Now, everything that you put into yourself, if you do it right, it comes back tenfold. Then you start learning how to manifest and how to say things and things come to you. This is going to sound weird, but do you know that I'm at the point in my life that if I say something or talk about someone or mention someone, they come like you, you this just happened with you. You call me, you say, yo, I'm going to be at the show. And I'm like, and I'm not even dazed anymore because Dave is here. You like that? Yeah. But anyway, if I think about something, like I'll give you an example. Like, oh man, I had a bill the other day. It was like $700. I'm like, what the hell am I going to do, right? Eh? I said, in order for me to get, obtain $700 from another source, I have to put myself out there so I make a couple of phone calls. Let's go back to predatory pricing. So I make a couple of phone calls and I say, hey, how you doing? I'm engaging in something, but it's not a hidden agenda because I don't have no problem telling people, I'm like, listen, the real reason why I called you after I sweet talked your ass to death is because I want to talk to you about something. You know what I'm saying? This came up and, you know, because I don't, I don't, you know, there's a way to engage people in a conversation so that you can get them in a comfort level to get to where you need to get. If you try to talk when you're angry or when you're out of pocket, you understand what I'm saying? What's going to happen? It's a challenge of the mind, challenge of the wills, so to speak. So, yeah, sometimes we are, not we, because it's me, sometimes I'm all over the place with the content that I talk about. But if you pay attention, you'll see that these are all just moving parts that I'm throwing at you. And they're all little segments, you know. It's just, there is a logistical chain to everything that I talk about. There is an order. Again, Shakespeare said there's a method to his madness. I've adapted that since high school. One of my science fiction teachers wrote that on, on, on my, uh, the, the book. What do you call yeah. that? Yeah, the yearbook. He, he wrote, you know, there is a method to his madness, and that's you. I, for, to some people, the way that I speak, the way that I organize things, they might be chaotic. But this is my world, you know. I'm the type that I have post-its all over the place, and I have little notes everywhere, but then when I consolidate, you know what I do with that list? I put them into different categories. Can anybody do what I do? Yeah, people can do what I do. Are they interested in doing it? I don't know, but I don't care. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is what I do. I cannot teach you. I can teach you to do what I do. It's up to you whether you adapt it or not, or at least take some of these things and uh, incorporate some of your own things. You know, because organization is key to balance. If you're not an organized person, forget about balance. Out the door. If you're not organized, you're never going to be balanced. You're always going to have some type of uh, Im chemical imbalance inside your system. Usually people that are not organized, they're not balanced, and they don't eat well. There's a, there's a, there's a correlation. There's, a, there's, a, uh, there's something that, that, that's related. There's something that's, that's related to that. You know what I'm saying? Like, Look, man, I'm telling you, if you don't believe me, go eat some of those superfoods, right? Some of those superfoods, you know what I'm saying, like that, that give you uh, stress relief, like ashwagandha. I've been taking ashwagandha. Ashwagandha is to relax, but it also, you know, there's a little debate about this, that it raises your sexual level, your, 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 your endurance level. Um, I'm not going to speak on that. I'm going to tell you that I'm going to buy another bottle soon. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to buy another bottle. Buy some Goldies. They taste good. Ashwagandha. You eat two of them. And believe me, you're like Superman. But um, that's what it is. Where we at? 
6.49. We got about 11 minutes left. We got another DJ coming up at 7 o'clock. I want to give a special shout out to Julie. She's been sick for the last couple of days. She hasn't been around. Had a couple of people worried. Uh, I myself was interested in what's going on. She wasn't available. Uh, so, you know, that being said, I just want to give a special shout out to Julie. Special shout out to all the DJs, all the fan base. You know, we got about 87 people here, which is really good. Uh, maybe I can stick in another subject. Yes, I can stick in one more subject and then we'll do some closing statements before uh, time elapses here. Uh, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited about what I talk about because uh, I feel as though I've used myself as a guinea pig. You know what I'm saying? I've used myself as a guinea pig to play a show and tell game with myself so that I can prove to myself that the things that I say are real. Do, are they going to work for everyone? No. But I'm pretty sure that there is something that you can get from this show that can at least get you started or can lead you in the right direction or can open a new door that you wasn't considering. Um, so this is what the purpose is of this show. And I love doing this. And every week I come with more content because guess what? Every day is a learning experience. Every day is an opportunity for you to learn something and add to your either vocabulary, to your knowledge bank, and, re and, and grow further from the word ignorance as far as you can. So this is what we try to achieve here. Be responsible, be accountable for your own knowledge. Uh, stop thinking that you know it all because when you think you know it all, you don't know nothing. Um, you don't allow yourself to think any further than one dimensionally and you need to stop doing that. Um, well, last thing that I wanted to talk about, there's another term in business called moral hazard. We might have covered a little bit on this, but I didn't have the right information with me. A moral hazard, um, I'll look it up for you too. A moral hazard is when someone does something. It could be a crime or something that's just like outrageous. And they don't pay any penalties or prices for it. They'll say like they uh, seem to get away. Like the one of the references was this person is always getting away with murder, right? They never get in trouble. You ever met someone like that? That they do a whole bunch of things and they never get caught, right? Yeah. You know, and there's even streaks where we do some funny things and we don't get caught. But then eventually, back in the days when I used to go through my craziness, I used to get arrested a lot when I was young. Um, and a lot of it was either marijuana charges or fighting charges. You know what I'm saying? So I keep it real here. I don't I don't have hair on my tongue. But I've been arrested a lot for, uh, what what's the word, violence, assault, assault. Well, whatever. It wasn't assault. Assault is when you attack someone, but you know. Domestic violence? Yeah, yeah. You know, fighting and all this stuff. No, domestic violence, that's, that, that, that's not really my category. More like in the streets fighting, you know what I'm saying? Like beating each other up and, and arguing and fighting and throwing bottles and all that stuff. Or possession of marijuana. Marijuana has been a detriment in my life because of the criminology that was behind it. So it, it was a thorn in my ass, but I always knew that it was going to be legal. You see, these are the things that I can tell where the world is going, it just took a long time for me, you know? Um, I didn't get to enjoy it the way a lot of people are gonna enjoy it now. I'm still alive, but I'm not a young buck, so, you know, the the traits are a little bit different. Moral hazard, you know, you don't um, pay for the things that you do. Moral hazard, let's look it up and see what it says. A moral hazard, if we, if we look up moral hazard definition, uh, it is lack of incentive to guard off against risk where one is protected from its consequences. Right. So basically, uh, like Takashi69, he's a rapper that is deemed a rat in the community. They were trying to kill him, so he snitched on everybody. Um, and he got away with a lot of that uh, talking and, and engaging in that social media clowning and, and you know, being a... a, a, a an antagonistic person, right, so to speak, and, and was checking people and was doing a lot of things for attention. He got away with that because in the streets, you don't really get away with stuff like that. You know, everybody has their turn. If you feel like being a clown or some goofy person, the streets doesn't have mercy for, for, for goofy people that, that as, as bad as the streets are, the streets do not want to be used. You know what I'm saying? And that's funny. Nobody wants to be used, not even the streets. So that'll be a lesson for you. You know, like for all you people that, that only go to the ghetto or only call people from the ghetto when you need a certain thing, I'm talking to you. For all you people that that the person, you don't go to this person for nothing else except something that you can't do. That, my friend, is another example of predatory pricing. 
that is also another example of who you are in bed with. <laughs> Think about this. Look at how this comes back to full circle. Who are you in bed with? Who you associate with? Who do you break bread with? Who, you do, who do you eat with? Who do you share with? You know that when you're eating food, there's certain people that can't touch your food. You better you'll get out of here. You know what I'm saying? Like, and there's other people that'll come and take your food, and they know you ain't gonna do nothing. Usually, you other half. A lot of men get mad when they order two dishes, and 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 their spouse eats their dish. <laughs> yeah, I never understood this. The man's like, "Yo, don't you got your own dish?" Yeah, but she ordered that for you, bro. Oh, the man's dish is always better. Than the woman's dish. Not always, but commonly. Commonly, you go out with your woman, you order something, and now I'm at the point where I don't even order anymore. I order appetizers so that you can have a variety of food. And it costs less and you get full faster. The problem is that these meals are big, so she's not going to eat the whole meal anyway. You end up eating more than you need to eat. Otherwise, you bring in doggy bags home, and at some point, you are going to eat it. It's better to eat it later than to eat it all in one sitting, that's for sure. But you got to understand, um, if, you, if you go out to eat with someone, the best thing to do is to offer when it starts. You know what I'm saying? Like, Listen, would you like to taste any of this? Because I'm about to knock this out. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm going to punish this meal. So do me a favor. If you want some, tell me now, because don't interrupt me when I start gobbling this food and just destroying this this plate of food. Shout out to everybody out there that is still with us. Uh, we got a DJ coming up next. Who's coming up next? I don't have I don't have the schedule. Who's coming up next? So if anybody knows who's coming up next, let me know so that I can give them a shout out. Um, I had a good time. My time is short today. I got cheated out of 10 minutes because I didn't have the stream key inside of the program. And of course, DJ Lou Diamonds have to come and save my butt like always. Uh, shout out to this guy. This guy is like smarter than your average bear. You know, like Yogi. DJ Casa is coming up. Oh, yeah. DJ Casa. DJ Casa is coming up. Um, a lot of these DJs have a lot of different genres. Um, that they work with. I was actually impressed with Lou Diamond's set uh, yesterday. That was a pretty good set. Um, I'll leave you with some words of wisdom, right? We'll close this shop up real quick. We'll do it on time. I don't want to interfere with nobody else's show. Um, if you want to make a change in life, you have to tell yourself to do it. If you want something out of life, you have to understand that there comes a time where you stop thinking because you have to kind of transform the thought inside of your head and manifest it into paper. You have to learn how to flush your mental toilet and not just the garbage. You also have to be, you have to flush the, 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 the garbage out of your system because if it's over flooded, there's no room for you to organize. You have to be able to recognize what's important, what's not important, what's relevant, what's not relevant, what you have to do right now, what needs the sense of urgency, and why is it that you always have to do something with a sense of urgency? Why are you always in a rush? You know why you're always in a rush? Because you're trying to do too much. And that's another thing that you have to recognize. That's a business term. In business, you have to know when you're doing too much or when you're not doing enough. You know? And I'm just putting my head down to think a little bit so I can process this thought. So I try to be professional and look at the camera. You know what I'm saying? That's how we do. But all in all, open your awareness a little bit. Stop blaming others for the things that you know are happening. A couple recently just that I know are fighting right now. One of them got caught talking to somebody else. And now they're mad at that person. Because that's their way of deflecting it or reflecting it and all the actings, right? Listen, at the end of the day, anybody that you are involved with, anybody that you spend time with, make sure that you're checking on them. Your kids, check your kids. Your kids didn't ask to be here. Check on them. Take care of them. Check on your family members. If somebody cares about you and you don't care about them, guess what? You're being unfair. You don't want to care about people that care about you, then you're in the wrong 
race. You know what I'm saying? Like, think about this. I care about people that care about me. You show me love, I show you love back. You don't show me love, you get no love back. You know, you cut, you cut the fat and, and, and you keep it moving. At the end of the day, make better choices. And if you're confused about the choices, then remove the easiest one. <laughs> Stick with the hardest one because the hardest choices are the ones that make you uncomfortable. But you're not a grown person and you're not ready to grow in this world until you are comfortable being uncomfortable. Until you are comfortable being uncomfortable, you're not growing up. And with that being said, we have reached the end of our show. This is P.S. I Love Me, brought to you by Olmiga Enterprises, LMC Radio. I am your host, Olmiga. And until further notice, I'll see you again. Take care. We done? We done. All set. Yeah. yeah.